IDBM Challenge Season 1 Episode 13 Augmented Reality Virtual Reality What is going on? What is what are those? In today's episode we talk about augmented reality with Emmy and you'll find out why augmented reality is one of the next big things shaping the way we interact with people, brands and companies. Hello, welcome to um, yet another episode to Next to a Lamp. My name is Mika J. Lehtonen and we are here in uh, Avenue's office together with Emmy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thanks, for, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Um, could we start by, um, could you tell a bit like, you know, where do you come from and who, who are you? And okay, sure. So, um, my name is Emmy Jonslehto and I'm the CEO and one of the three co-founders of Arilin. Uh, Arilin is a technology startup focused 100% on augmented reality. And what we do is we develop an augmented reality platform called Arilin. And our aim is to be kind of the, well you could say the Photoshop of AR. So basically we provide tools for professionals uh, in marketing, media, entertainment, so that they can create these uh, augmented reality experiences um, using narrative tools to, for their audience, whether that is consumers or their own customers, whomever. Mm. So uh, uh, our aim is to bring the best tools to create augmented reality stories, campaigns uh, out to the market. Mm. And um, we have been doing this for three and a half years now. The company was actually uh, founded in, uh, in August 2013, so about four years ago already. But it took over six months from that point that to get the courage to actually become an entrepreneur. So for the first six months, it was more like the hobby for the weekends. Mm -hmm. And we were still, we were all, the, all the three founders, we had our daily jobs elsewhere. And uh, then finally got the courage to <laughs> jump and start to do this. And uh, at the time that when we started, augmented reality was really, a, it's still not huge, but at the time it was a really niche thing. And uh, we, the first time we went to Tekes, they actually sent, said to us that this is very interesting, but couldn't you consider doing some kind of games or something like that? <laughs> so, so it was a rather new thing at the moment when we started out, but uh, we found that it was very interesting to, mm. to uh, start filling the world with augmented virtual stuff. So, so we kind of like started in a way that because we think it's so cool, of course there are others who will think it's cool also and, and I don't think that it maybe is not the smartest way to start business but, <laughs> but anyway it, it seems like a good thing at the moment and it still does so that's that's uh, and we are a nice combo with the three founders it's uh, like two of us have a background in uh, IT industry mm -hmm. we used to work in a big IT company and um, myself I was more in the sales and um, consulting part and, uh, and then our CTO Otto he's uh, he was uh, more like in the development side and uh, in charge of development teams and, and so on. So, and actually our background is that the both of us have been working in the location-based solutions oh, for okay. this one. And, um, and the third uh, member is uh, Otso, he's our creative uh, director and he, uh, he comes from the music and film industry. So it's kind of the mixture of sales, creative and tech that got it all started out. So I think it's quite good that we have from, from the beginning, there has been like all these three, three different angles mm -hmm. uh, to, to mix up, so. Yeah, and that's actually really cool that, you know, we have been discussing AR and using like the abbreviation, like augmented reality, AR. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe, I have a feeling that there are like some people in the audience don't have any clue on what yeah, and you have given some really nice examples, but yeah. for someone, let's say there's like this, like a jungle boy or girl coming from the jungle, 
no idea about the society. How would you explain what AR is? Do you have like okay. nice examples or? Sure. It'd be good if we do some demos uh, also here, but uh, augmented reality um, is the things that you can't see with your naked eye, <coughs> but mm. when you have uh, some device like your mobile phone or a tablet uh, and the software inside it, it will show you um, virtual things added on top of the real world. So uh, where virtual reality is where you put the headset on and then you see nothing but the virtual environment, mm. you are like there. Um, in augmented reality, you actually are very much here in the reality, uh, and but you see things that are added on top of it. And um, so, for example, uh, in Pokemon Go, that's a good example that you saw those little monsters everywhere, and uh, um, so they were an, a new layer added on top of the real world. Mm. And that is like augmented reality. Uh, it's quite often um, marker-based, so you have to have some kind of a marker that you identify with your device, to, with your phone. So um, it can be basically anything. Uh, it, some companies use uh, some technologies, they use codes. Mm -hmm. So some of them look like QR codes, some are more uh, customized. Uh, but anyway, there are some kind of a code that you need to kind of a crack and identify with your phone. Or as in Ireland, we are our technology is based on image recognition. So basically, any image will do, um, and um, no specific code needs to be added on it. So you just we take the picture uh, to our system, and then you combine the, the content that you want with that target. We call these uh, images targets. So basically, when you scan an image, the system will recognize it and ask from our cloud service that please uh, deliver the content that is related to it and then you will mm -hmm. see uh, the, the uh, augmented reality experience popping up. Yeah. Uh, so so um, that's, that's basic, that basically AR, of course there are different kinds, there are also um, uh, like location-based uh, tracking, so whenever you enter somewhere it will give you information that here is something for you to see and, and there are different kinds of ways for the recognition. Do you have any like um, kind of public cases or like is there anything you can share? You know, you've been doing quite many interesting things with like mm -hmm. different organizations or different clients. Do you have any like kind of examples you can share? Sure, uh, quite many. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Um, well, we have been um, working a lot with museums and artists so, uh, for example, these, I don't know if you can see it, in the, maybe not, they are cut off the picture, <laughs> but they are posters of Tuve Jansson's uh, big frescoes. Oh. Um, and those frescoes are actually in real size in the Helsinki Art Museum, Ham, at the moment. And um, that's a nice example how you can add augmented reality into the piece of art and also use it as an informative channel and as an user interface. So when you scan the fresco in a museum, mm -hmm. you will get augmented buttons around it and all of those will play a different content for you. So you can choose what you want to see and there is a virtual guide appearing uh, in front of the, the big fresco in real size as a person and he tells the stories about the painting and, and uh, sometimes he hops inside the painting and walks among the people in the mm -hmm. painting and explains who that person is and why she is wearing the dress she is wearing and so on mm -hmm. and from all these buttons you will get another story so it's really interactive and it's, um, and it's interesting so that is a one nice example of, of how you can get more out of the like as, of course a painting is a media itself but mm -hmm. but then you will by adding augmented reality layer on it you will get more information and you can like um, learn more about it and and actually that is also an interesting case because i have a nine-year-old son 
uh, and his very critical audience for augmented <laughs> reality. Uh, whenever I show him show him something, uh, something that I think that this is really cool, like once I showed him a, um, a spacecraft coming from the floor and flying around and it was really really nice looking <laughs> thing and all the adults that I have shown it were like whoa this is great and so mm -hmm. on he was like uh-huh uh-huh okay uh what now and then I'm like what now you can move it around yeah but what can I do can I fly it can I shoot it what can I do? And I'm like, mm. uh, no, <laughs> you can't. So, but with the, these two Janssen frescoes, uh, he actually went through all the different buttons and he listened to all of, the, or watched all these virtual stories that were in, uh, that were told there. So, I think that in a way that was a good example of that also, uh, like it's educational and when there is interaction also the children are interested about that but the thing is that the kids and young young people are nowadays so used to interaction and things happening fast that the need of this new media is the content must be very different from what we have been used to uh, in a, in a, the older generations are used to. So I think that that is also one thing that is an uh, advantage for augmented reality. Mm. It's easy to update, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, it can be interactive and I'm sure that quite soon we are seeing more and more also social AR experiences. Because today AR is mostly that one person scans and she or he sees the thing that pops up. Yeah, yeah. But that's actually quite lonely. You can you can take a picture or you can take a video and share it online, but it would be much nicer to to share the experience with a friend. So we have already done our first uh, tests and demos about it, so that when that you and I could be scanning with our own devices the same thing and see at the same time what's happening, and then if I move something there or I I chose some some uh, to some buttons to do some different uh, features there you will see what's happening and what I have chosen and, and vice versa so it becomes much more interactive so um, I think that that is something that that is happening soon um, but yeah to, uh, to give some other examples well in Helsinki Sanomat uh, the biggest Finnish newspaper there has been quite many nice uh, things lately there they have these um, uh, they have had these posters of their logo that famous artists have been recreated or uh, done their own versions of these logos as, uh, as a piece of art and they have been augmented in a way that when you scan them with the Arlen app you will see how it starts to change and uh, so those wow. are quite nice and um, well then there is the national broadcasting uh, company in Finland, Yle. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have actually a wide label version of Erlin. It's called uh, Yle AR and um, uh, they have been using it. Uh, they started out uh, testing it in the, the uh, Swedish kids um, program in their uh, Christmas calendar, advent calendar last year and this spring they had this, uh, they were using it as part of this Hula Hula Suomi program that aimed to... Okay. Yeah, there was this program where they wanted to teach the whole Finland to ta dance. And and uh, it was a, a much bigger concept, so there were events and, uh, and different kind of things happening all the time, but they also used AR as part of it. So, so uh, there are a lot of different kind of examples of how to use AR and... Uh, and uh, Maybe I can send you some links uh, so that you could mm -hmm. share those with the students so that, that you will, uh, because we have quite a lot of material uh, in Vimeo and YouTube and so on. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. This has been a wonderful discussion. And I would like to wrap things up with a, with a short word association task. Okay. So, so we have been asking this from, from, from our other experts as yep. well. So we have like a set of 10 words and just 
I'll give you a word and just give me like just oh, on okay. the top of okay. my mind. Okay, okay, go ahead. Shoot but, it. But these are really like nothing nasty or anything. Okay, good. Okay, are, are you ready? Okay, I am. Um, first one, success. And now I'm not there. Ready at all. difficult one. Success, I think that filling your dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, technology. Enabler. Space. Uh, that's um, uh, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> yeah, space. Um, the final frontier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, business. Mm, Aaron, <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> Innovation. Um, imagination. I think that is what it all comes down to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, future. Enormous open possibilities. Strategy. Mm-hmm. A guideline. Mm-hmm. Design. Design, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, it's design is everything. I think that it's very important. I mean, it's the thing that kind of like makes you to choose whether you wanna use it, whether it's a service or a thing or whatever mm-hmm. or or not. So I think that. It's eye candy, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, now, I realized actually, I, maybe I didn't tell you the name of our master's program, but it's okay. um, IDDM. Yeah. Well, that's the next word. Okay. Um, okay. I think that there's no like one word to explain it, but what it for me, it's kind of like the um, difficult to explain this in shortly, but I, I think that uh, that course is kind of like a bit like of the piece of the future. So it helps this uh, talent inside that it's really interesting to see what pops up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, IMDb. What is the shorting of it? This is the International Movie Database. Mo- movie Database. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad for me. Okay. Uh, uh, treasure World. Oh, <laughs> <something>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we like the last two ones is like we're really conscious now because when we say IDBM, which is yeah. short for our program, yeah. and, and then quite often people are Yeah, like, that's yeah, confusing. Yeah, like, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, Thank you so much, Andy. Hey, thank you.